start sharing my screen. Um, so um, we are here to um, kind of share with you um, how course reserves and media services um, can help support you with your courses instruction um, for this uh, upcoming semester and future semesters. Um, my name is Donna Femlinella. Um, I'm the course reserves um, manager here at the library as well as the makerspace manager. Um, and Sean Casey is the Le library and media services manager and he will be um, talking later more um, specifically about media services and how that can uh, support y'all. Um, so I just wanted to give kind of an overview and share with you kind of our uh, system for course reserves, um, how you all can submit your requests, talk about some features, um, talk about specific types of requests, and um, again, how those are um, there for you uh, to, to share readings, textbooks, and whatnot for your students. Um, so we'll jump right into it and share how to actually submit requests um, through uh, our course reserve system. So in Canvas, um, there should be this course reserves button in each of your courses. Once you click on that, that will bring you into our system. It's embedded in Canvas. It's a separate um, kind of system and, and website with this, um, but it is embedded in Canvas. And this is your homepage, and this is where you will um, see the list of readings that you submit. It will give you um, other features. This is also how you will go about um, in terms of submitting your requests. I'm next going to go into um, the specific type of requests. Um, we have a variety of ways that um, you can support your students and, and um, have them do uh, readings and um, get the instruction to them. Um, we'll start with how to actually get to that part. Um, here again on the home page in course reserves, you will select add reserve items. And once you are in, come on friend, we're not gonna go in there. Oops, yeah. my patience, I know my patience. There we are. Um, once you get to that site, you will see um, the, the icons for the different type of requests. Uh, we'll start with articles. Those are coming from our um, electronic databases. Um, any of the serials that we have access to, we, um, if they are available in our um, databases, we will link directly to that database, ProQuest, EBSCO, JSTOR, all of, all of the good ones we have. Um, if for some reason we don't have access to it electronically, um, we will submit requests to get those articles. Um, so anything that's not within our collection, we will definitely um, do our due diligence to, to ensure that we do get those readings for your students. The next one is going to be um, chapters. I'm going to hold off on textbooks and that's its own uh, kind of uh, animal. Um, there's, a, there's a lot to textbooks, so we're going to save that to the end. So I'm going to move on to chapters. Um, we are more than happy to, to scan and upload uh, PDFs of, of book chapters. Um, with our copyright uh, guidelines, um, I do want to note that, that we can only do 10% or one chapter, whichever is greater, um, of a book um, for the entire semester. Um, we're not able to scan 10%, take that down, and put another 10% up. Um, it's just, it's for the entire semester is that kind of copyright um, restriction and guideline. If we see that a request is over that copyright, we will see if we can purchase um, access to an ebook if that's available to us. Um, if not, we will definitely send you an email saying this is over copyright and then asking which, which part of the book you would like us to, to upload. And then we will make sure that a physical copy is on reserves for your students to access that way to get the remaining chapters. The next one, um, I will again pause and uh, hold off on media. Um, Sean will be um, sharing um, all of those those good things that he can do for you. So we'll 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 pause with that one as well. Um, and then there's the other two, other and upload. Um, other was kind of our catch-all. Um, we um, look at those in terms of uh, um, kind of websites um, or instructional kind of tools um, available online. Um, 
it's just kind of a quick, easy title, author, whatever you can provide us. And then what we will do is um, uh, try to get that um, from online and stuff like that. Um, I should note as well, in each of our requests, we do have this last option um, that says this item will be used for the first month of course. It's just as we are entering our busy period um, with requests coming in, it uh, allows us to prioritize requests. So if there is something that you need kind of more immediate, um, definitely click on that when you are submitting your request, just so that we can know that that is a priority and we will get to those before we wait to any readings for later in the semester. I now want to um, jump ahead to our textbooks. Um, so for textbooks, we have been lucky that the library has um, prioritize and given us resources to to purchase ebooks. Um, with uh, the pandemic, that was definitely um, a necessary thing to do to allow access to to students to still maintain um, course readings. Um, and we've continued on with that um, procedure. Um, we when we see a textbook request, uh, we will first see if we can get it as an ebook. Um, we look for institutional wide licenses. Um, and if we can, we will then purchase that. Um, I should kind of note with licensing, it's um, dependent on the publisher and how they have um, provided access to institutions. Um, you might see that you're able individually to purchase or your students are able to individually purchase um, an ebook through um, a publisher website, but that might be their, um, their own kind of proprietary um, platform that we as an institution do not have access to. Um, when we do look at licenses, um, we always um, look for unlimited. If that is an option to us, we, were, we will purchase that. Um, if that is not an option to us and only um, single user licensing is available to us, we will purchase um, at least three single user licenses. What that means is three students, three patrons are able to view um, that full text um, at once. Um, for our physical collection, if we are not able to purchase um, an ebook, we um, have um, really made it um, a priority to, to get um, as many options and access to students. Um, if we, if it is part of the ebook and also part of our physical collection that we already own, we will make both available to your students. Um, if only the it's only available um, as a physical uh, book, we will try to get at least two copies on reserves, and those will have different loan periods for students to borrow it. Um, when a student is borrowing from our physical collection, they are visiting our circulation course reserves desk on the first floor, um, and we provide uh, we get the call number, um, and then we give them. The, the book to borrow. It's going to be either a three hour loan or a one day loan. And again, what we are trying to or striving to do is placing two copies on reserves, um, one being a three hour loan and one being a one day loan. Again, giving um, students the ability to kind of um, have access to these materials in, in a multitude of ways. Um, I'm going to go into some features and also kind of share the look of how students access um, these readings and what you all see. Um, we're going to go back to the home page of course reserves in Canvas. Um, again, this is um, what you first see when you enter. This is your view. Um, students have a slightly different view, and I will go over that in just a moment. Um, but again, these are the, the list of readings that have been submitted. Um, as you can see here, you're able to um, see our status um, of, of the readings. Um, this one, for example, is an article. Um, students, once they click on this reading, that did not work, which is amazing. <laughs> go back, oh, sorry. We'll go back in.
it brings them to, um, in this case, EBSCO into the full text. Um, this last, this uh, second one is a uh, book chapter. And again, what this does is pull up uh, a PDF of, of that chapter. Um, this next one is, um, was considered part of, uh, it's the other one, it's um, uh, a website. And again, once uh, students click on this, they will get to that website that has been um, put in. These next two are the physical books, or sorry, are, are textbooks. Uh, this first one right here, where it says item available at the reserves desk, that is a physical copy. Um, when students click on that, they will get to this page and they will get the call number, which is what we need. And they are able to also click on that link, which brings them to our catalog. And they're able to see if uh, something is checked out or available. So then they know at that time that it's available to them to come and borrow from our desk. The second one was an ebook. And again, what this does, similar to the articles, it will bring you to um, the database. Uh, this is an example of one that we only have three um, user licenses for. Um, I will note, similar to articles, we are pulling from a, 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 a variety of databases. Um, so each platform will look slightly different in terms of how you get to the readings, how you get to um, accessing chapters, um, pages, and whatnot. Um, they are often pretty um, intuitive. Um, it's usually a listing of the table of contents, and you're able to um, click on that read um, on that specific table or chapter or or um, uh, page numbers. Um, this is again another no, um, thing that uh, the publisher or the the vendor kind of. Um, limits. There are some that you are able to download an entire PDF of the chapter. You're able to put like uh, print hundreds of pages. You're not able to print anything. Those restrictions are all kind of listed within this um, this record. Um, and again, it varies by, by book. It's not even by platform. It varies by book um, in terms of what you're able to, to do. Um, you are always able to read it online. That's always the case. Um, but in terms of printing or downloading, there are um, varied options depending on the title. Um, I wanted to go into um, kind of using readings from a previous semester. Uh, that is a under add reserve items. And once you go here, you will see kind of you scroll a little, this import, import items from a current or previously taught course. Um, if you are hoping to use readings from a previous semester or you're doing um, two sections of the same course um, and you have already put them in for section one and you just wanna have all of those readings be for section two, you can come here when you click on import items, it will give you a list of all of those readings. You're able to unselect anything that you do not want to um, have submitted. And then you're gonna cl click on import items and that will then move into our system and into this course. Let me go back to our course page. Another thing I wanted to note in terms of features um, is this top um, kind of uh, what they're called tags. Um, you can also see them listed here um, on the left column. These are kind of um, a way of grouping your readings um, so that students is like, okay, great, week one, I can just click on this and it's just gonna pull those, those readings for week one. Sometimes um, when you have, um, many, many, many readings in this system. This list can be overwhelming. Um, so that's a good way to kind of group your readings. Um, and that option is available when you are submitting the request right here under this course tags. And that's what's visible to students. I will say um, if you, this is very, um, what's the word I'm trying to look for? Um, if you put week one um, in one of the, the requests and then week zero one by accident, 
that it's going to show as different tags. So it needs to be the exact wording, letters, language that you used um, if you want to group these uh, readings together. And this is, again, a good way to kind of um, uh, have students easily able to see uh, of your, your readings for that week. Um, you are able to uh, change kind of this if you're like, actually, I only have a few readings, but I do want them to be organized in a different way. You're able to um, kind of move these around. Once you have done that, always click on this save item order, and that will save that. And again, as being the um, kind of instructor or administrator of this course for course reserves, you're able to do that and it saves it for everyone. Let me make sure I go through all of them, processing. Ooh. Ooh. Um, sorry, I'm clicking on things. The last thing I did wanna note, um, I, I had mentioned this before, this is your view. Um, this is what you are seeing. You are able to see what students are seeing. Um, you're able to see the full listing of readings or, um, or requests, regardless of their status. Um, students are only able to see things that are available. So that's if it's available electronically or if it's available um, at our desk. Um, to be able to kind of see what they are seeing, if you click on switch to student mode, this is now how do students see it. Um, and you're able to kind of, if there's any troubleshooting you want to do with them or kind of, again, just make sure they are seeing um, what you want them to be seeing, here's a good way to, to do that. Um, I, I know that is also an option in um, Canvas when you switch to um, kind of student mo mode here. If you do that in Canvas and then try to click into the course reserves, it's not going to recognize you. Um, the way our system's set up, it's not understanding that you're now the instructor. It's trying to pull um, kind of an identification from you that it's just not able to, to, um, to understand. So always get out of, um, of that student mode, get back to your instruction mode in Canvas, and then move into uh, course reserves. And again, like I said, that is an option to you specifically in our system. Um, I am now going to stop sharing my screen and um, let Sean um, kind of talk about media services. Great. Thanks, Donna. Uh, I will start sharing my screen. Give me a second and we'll see if this works. Okay. I think that works. Okay. So, uh, hi, everybody. Um, yeah, I'm going to talk about the media services collection and what we can do for you and specifically how that uh, interacts with course reserves and um, a lot of the features that Donna's gone over um, it are, are advantages for your students uh, when using media, media collection as well. Um, anyway, that was just slow. <laughs> Just a minute. Okay. Um, so the, Donna showed you that uh, media request button within course reserves. Um, these are the kinds of requests you can make. Uh, so if you want a video, if you want your students to watch a streaming video, uh, you can make that request through course reserves. Uh, and then the advantage is your students can find that with your course. They don't have to go to the library catalog or to go hunting for it somewhere else. Uh, it's just on there with all your other readings uh, and it's simple for them to find there. Uh, you can request uh, physical DVDs and we have Blu-ray discs as well. Um, you can request those be put on course reserve physically at the library so that um, your students can take them out for a short period and watch them on site. Um, of course, the advantage of that is it makes sure that it's there for your students. Uh, no one else has taken it out for a month. Um, and it's, it's physically loaded, located with the course reserves. Um, you can also request uh, DVDs and Blu-rays for pickup. So if you're 
planning on showing a video in class, um, you can request it through course reserve, course reserves for the date you're going to show it, come pick it up. And again, that guarantees that it's there for you and you don't discover that somebody else, another professor has it out the day you want to show it to class. So that's useful as well. Um, it also shows the students that this is something that you're going to show. And so if they want to watch it ahead of time or if they miss that class and want to watch it later, it's on their course reserves to know to come to the library and get it. Um, you have a question in the chat. Sure. Asking for those of us who teach remotely, can we access videos, DVD screenings be streamed on Zoom? Uh, I will get I'll get to that in in a bit. And uh, if I don't cover that, remind me, because, yeah, that's that's definitely a, uh, an option. Um, the the last option for what kind of request you want uh, is you can set up a screening in the library. So if you don't want to um, take class time to show a video, you can set up a screening for your students to come to the library and watch a video. Uh, you can also bring your class to the library. So I know a lot of the classrooms uh, are not really the best location to show video. Uh, they may not get dark enough. The seating might be wrong, might not have a good projector. Uh, but we have a classroom. You can bring your class to the library and uh, show a screening on site with us. Um, so I'm not going to go too much into why I consider video. Obviously, I think it's an uh, important uh, instructional tool. All like studies and things say, you know, it it uh, makes an impact on students. It's a it's a excellent way to get across um, topics in a short amount of time. Um, so, video is 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 a great tool for instruction. Uh, our our media collection is very good, especially for a school our size. Uh, we have over 20,000 DVDs. We have over 100,000 licensed streaming videos. Uh, and these are all in the library catalog where you, you can find them. Um, over 100 courses a semester use video. Uh, in a year, library videos are watched by you know 45,000 plus uh, viewers. Um, everything is not rosy. And so I'll, I'll acknowledge this. Um, so this is from a study that was recently done by uh, a consulting group called Outsell, um, and they talked to talked to library faculty about using video, about pluses and minuses, what what their experience is, uh, and these were the sort of the barriers that faculty expressed about using videos. So um, first one is you know technology challenges. Obviously, it's more technologically involved than um, reading a physical book, right? Um, at, at AU specifically, I think we've done a, a pretty good job of solving that kind of problem. Uh, we've been doing uh, video online for 15, 20 years. Uh, and so it's gotten like most importantly, like the platforms have gotten very stable. It's not like things disappear or uh, um, you get buffering issues or things like that. Um, basically, if your students can access Canvas, um, they can get into the course reserves and access the videos the same way. Um, so there aren't a lot, you know, every system has hiccups, but even when there's uh, some problem, the uh, the time to solution is is usually only a matter of hours. Um, people also, also express concerns about lack of off-campus streaming. Um, all, all of our videos are set up for both on-campus and off-campus. So students have to authenticate so that the vendors know that they're with AU, that they have the right to access. Um, but if they can log into their regular AU login, that's what's used for logging into the videos. Um, so it, it works as well as that works. 
Um, briefly about off campus, there are there are issues with students in other countries. Um, issues uh, depending on where they are issues about like the bandwidth they have on their internet connection uh and issues about what that country blocks and allows um so if you have students currently in china there may be uh there may be things that they just can't get to uh and not a lot that you can do about that um so it's good to look into it ahead of time when, when you're deciding what kinds of things uh, you want to assign. Uh, faculty always also express concerns about copyright problems. Uh, copyright is a very big issue in video, um, and we'll get back to that a little bit. But the on the positive side there are a hundred thousand titles in the library catalog that we have licensed that are uh, available to your students right now so you know if you find something in the catalog it's uh it's something we can provide you uh accessibility challenges again here i think we're way ahead of the curve uh compared with the general general field um the vast majority of those hundred thousand titles have uh real uh human-made subtitles on them uh and they come from the vendor that way so that means that the subtitles are written or created by professionals uh and it and they don't rely on machine reading to create them so if you look at your uh your general YouTube video and try and look at the subtitles or even like Zoom, those are created on the fly by uh, the program and they can be less than ideal, especially if you're relying on them to get the content of, of, of the meaning. Um, our videos come with subtitles that are much better than that. Um, in addition to that, if you have a student who specifically needs uh, subtitles for access issues, um, they can make a request through um, the academic uh, support office, uh, and they will they will buy uh, real subtitles and will attach that to whatever video you you are using, whatever video you need, uh, and that's for accessibility support. Um, and finally. I won't say we've solved search and discoverability, but um, the, the one thing is everything we have is in the library catalog. And so all the search features that are in the catalog for looking up books, looking up articles uh, are available for looking up videos. And uh, putting the videos in Canvas makes it as easy as possible for your students to find them. Um, the video is where your students are. They're in Canvas all the time. They're in course reserves all the time. And so that's where the videos are for them. Um, the other thing from this report I found interesting was, so where do professors find the videos that they, they want to use? Um, and this pie chart shows, not surprisingly, most faculty like ask their colleagues, you know, word of mouth, what, uh, do you think I should use in this in this area? What do you like? What do you not like? Et cetera, et cetera. Um, that's great. Uh, but this pie chart shows that only 12% of faculty are getting their recommendations from the library. Um, and we'd we'd like to increase that maybe a little bit. Um, that's that's what we're here for. We're here to link you up to the the resources you want to use. Uh, so, like I said, everything is in the library catalog and can be searched. Um, the media services web pages have uh, quite a few different finding aids for um, searching specific videos by topic or by area. Um, so, for example, DocuSeek is one of our distributors. Um, one of our very high quality distributors, just about everything on DocuSeek is top-notch documentary. Um, 
they have over 600 subject areas uh, listed out for to help find titles. So uh, you can go to that um, subject guide. And if you are interested in you want to show something about environmental science, they have a subject guide for that. If you want to show something about Laos, they have a subject guide of their Laotian videos. It's it's really excellent. Um, and finally, um, Media Services is here to help you determine, you know, find resources. So you're always welcome to contact us. Um, you contact us through the Canvas request button that we've been talking about and just like put a note on your request. Uh, you can reach us at media services at American.edu, or you can meet, meet me directly at Sean C at uh, American.edu. Um, so brief, this is sort of, I guess, background and briefly, if you're looking for a title or you have a title in mind, you don't need to be worried about where it comes from, it, what distributor it comes from, or any of that. That's that's what we're here for. Um, but the videos we get are a couple of different types. The majority are licensed through a collection. So we will license the DocuSeq collection, and we'll get 50,000 titles from them, and those will go in the library catalog. Um, that's the majority of things uh, we get. And those are just renewed every year as long as the distributor has them they'll appear in the catalog um we can also license things for you title by title um so if there's a specific um i don't know pbs documentary that you saw two years ago um and it's it's not on one of our distributors we might be able to license that through canopy or through swank um, just that specific title. Uh, those are annual licenses, so have to be renewed and paid for every year. Um, but if that's what you're using, that's, you know, we're happy to do that as well. Um, and then finally, there is, we do do uh, some fair use streaming, and this is uh, streaming from our DVD collection. So if we own a DVD, under some circumstances, we will be able to stream that to your class through Canvas. Um, the title cannot be available in any format or in any way on the on the internet. So uh, we can't be, it has to be unavailable for us to license and it has to be unavailable for an individual to rent themselves. So that means we can't license it for typically 150 600 to $600. Uh, students can't rent it for typically $3. Uh, if it's not available at all on the internet, then we can stream it if we have it on DVD in our collection. Uh, when we do that, we can stream it for your course only and only for uh, the spe specific semester that you are using it. So it disappears at the end of the semester. Um, and then if it comes around next semester, you want to use it again, we have to make we have to make that determination again. Is it available? Is it not available um, to, to satisfy the fair use uh, restrictions? Um, lastly, so what we can't do. So if you ever want to get a librarian uh, worked up, you know, that we hear this all the time, you know, oh, well, you know, why do we need libraries? Every book is available online. Um, obviously that's not true, but we also hear the same thing about video. You know, all videos are online. Why can't, uh, you know, we just get access it. Um, there's a lot of videos that we do not have access to. Um, and a lot of videos that would be phenomenal in uh, university instruction. Uh, so Hamilton um, could be used for a lot of different courses. Um, we do not have access to that in any way. Hamilton 
is a Disney Plus exclusive. So you need to be an individual with a Disney Plus subscription to access that. Um, same thing with the, the 1619 project. They did a documentary in addition, in addition to um, the book, et cetera, uh, that um, that is not available to us uh, because it's exclusive to Hulu. Um, I would love to get reservation dogs for classes because that is one of the most important TV series of the last couple of years, completely written, produced, act by uh, Native Americans. It's important for uh, for the history of media, but it is not available to libraries. Um, so I guess the, the point of all that is if you're interested in a topic or if you're interested in a specific title, um, con contact us as soon as soon as you can um, so we can figure this out. And uh, if we can, we'll get it, we'll license it. Uh, if we can't, we have hopefully lots of uh, alternatives that we can suggest for you. Um, but all this takes time, so as soon as possible is, is the best. Um, and I will end my screen, and if anybody has questions um, about the online courses, um, so specifically streaming through Zoom, um, there's uh, there's some issues with that. So if you have an online course, the best course of action is to use Canvas or use course reserves, right? And we can link a video to there and you have no problems. If you're using one of the, uh, whatever they're called, the third party learning systems that AU uses, uh, we can all we can also work with those. Um, some of those use the course reserve system and it's, it's the same process. Some of those third parties don't, and we can just send you a, a secure URL for using for your class. Uh, if you want to just stream th something through Zoom, uh, say you you are Dis a Disney Plus subscriber and you want to uh, show Hamilton to your class, there's there's a couple problems with that. The first is um, you're violating your license your user agreement with user plus um, because your user agreement specifically says that you are you you are viewing it as a individual and you are not sharing it uh, so that's that's a contract between you and disney plus and um that's up to you to determine whether you're going to do that or not um, in addition to that there are technology issues with doing that um, First of all, your computer and your connection have to be robust enough to do that. So that's that's a lot of processing for your computer. You're running Zoom, you're downloading the Zoom feed, you're uploading the Zoom feed, uh, you're downloading the streaming feed from the vendor all at the same time. Um, so so that that takes a lot of whatever horsepower and, and is not always smooth. Uh, the other hurdle is that more and more of the uh, video providers are getting sophisticated enough that they can tell through their stream what you're doing with it. So they will just flat out prevent you from doing that. Um, but that's that's all a determination for you to make yourself. Uh, I would just say uh, test it ahead of time if you're go if you're going to try and do it, test it ahead of time so you don't get stuck in your class and and you know you end up zooming a blank screen to your students. Are there any other questions for either your either Donna or I? Yes, hi. How are you doing? Hi. Hi, Sean. Hi, Donna. Hi. So um I'm a uh, I'm a new instructor in uh Covard this year. I'm not a professor by trade. I'm I'm just um just a guy who has a lot of real estate finance experience and retired. So um, Don, I just sent you an email because frankly, I'm you know just trying to get everything set up just to get to the classes, you know, 
getting the class and getting my ID and all that. But I want to get my core, I want to get my textbook um, on the course material. So I sent you the email. Is that enough at this point? Yeah, I should have noted that um, earlier. I am happy to receive emails um, or of syllabi, listing of readings, just a, a one-off book. Like that is definitely an okay way to submit requests um, as well. Um, I will note for syllabi, um, if I do get a syllabus, um, I will focus at this point just on the first month readings and any textbooks and then wait yeah. to submit. Right. Um, but yeah, no, that's now definitely. This is just, this is just one, it's, it's like old day when I was in school 40 years ago. It's basically one textbook. Yep. And that's, I just, so can you help me understand a little bit more? I mean, I've been in the, sitting here listening to the training, but this is all new to me. I mean, when I went to school, there was no videos, there was none of this stuff. And of course, where I work, we had all this, but I just wasn't intimately involved with the process of it. So in this case, um, if, there, if the textbook is on the course, is listed on the uh, on the uh, course uh, reserves, um, what what is kind of the likelihood that students, because I, I don't care if they use an ebook, I don't care if they use a hard copy, I don't care where they get it from, unless just ensure that it's, it's proper and, and obviously legal. Um, what you see the case you, you put it on the, you put it on there and then they go and look for it is that how they and then what what's the chance of them being able to um do they i mean do students generally go through this process or do they go out and find it themselves i mean i'm just i just don't know the process no that's an excellent question um so uh, i will say for textbooks um the majority of what we find is students just show up at our desk being like is this book on reserves? My my either my faculty my my instructor told me it was, or they're just hoping it is. Um, so with that, we are searching our catalog and and um, kind of directing them that way. Um, if we I think in some ways we hope because it is a way for students to access this on their own um, that they would go to course reserves and then they can see that textbook listed and then they can see where it is if it's either an ebook or if it's electronic or sorry if it's um, available at the desk um, but for the most part student behavior is they show up at our desk okay so um so anyway so if i sent you that email then you can help me out with that it's pretty straightforward i just okay um and is it generally and then i got one other question and i don't want to afford the time so the other thing is generally um, textbooks, uh, this is from McCraw. Um, so do their textbooks, do they generally allow students to have more than, I mean, does it allow, uh, how do I ask this in, in an intelligent way? So do they allow them to lease them generally for a certain period of time? You know, that's a great question. Um, I'm trying to think, I know we have gotten licenses um, from books that have been published um, through McCraw. Um, so yes, they are definitely a publisher that um, allows for institutional wide licensing. Um, so it's what it what happens is we purchase that license. So we have it um, from that point forward. Um, and then what we then have access to is that link to a specific database um, and students are able to read the the full text um, online. Okay, are they able to print that text if they if they get it online? Are they able to print it, or is that not printable? It depends. Again, it's and that's by uh, the title. So um, some okay. do allow for you to download. Some do not. It it totally oh. depends. I I will say it's probably they probably I've never seen you able to um, like just print or download an entire book. Yeah. Okay. All right. So I sent just an email. Thank you, Don. And that hopefully that will help me um, help me on my way. And you can direct me and <laughs> guide me since there's so many things, just it's the process, just getting up on, up on board at AU for the first time has been pretty, pretty amazing. How many things, how many places I have to go to get done. <laughs> I hear you. Yeah. yeah. I will look for that and I will get back to you. Thank you. Thanks, yeah, of Sean. Thank you very much. Also, I, I appreciate your, your uh, discussion about using videos that actually made me think of some things and um, um i guess my my thought original thought was and if you can give me some ideas on this is that originally one of the things i want to do I, I actually don't want to be the person who always picks the video what i want is current market conditions so i wanted my students to go out um and and generally have a, a, a order where everybody would generally have a week that they'd have to go out and find a video of some relevance to our topic 
um, or in the, the real estate uh, finance area. And then they would have to post it in Canvas and then and then they'd lead the discussion about it. Um, is that something that is that something that you're familiar with, with professors and instructors do, or is that can I like doing something that's kind of like not? No, no, I I could totally see that. Um, like like you said about going to a bunch of different places at AU. So if your students are posting videos to Canvas, uh, I would talk to the e-learning office uh, just because they manage the Canvas platform itself, where right. your where your course is. Um, and so the functionality about um, you allowing people to post to your course, uh, sharing resources in the course, um, they can help you out with with all that sort of stuff. OK, I just was curious that, yeah, I, I, I'm, thanks. I, I actually have somebody in Covar that's been very one-on-one uh, -on -one with me yeah, teaching yeah. me Canvas. I guess I was just curious about in your experience has generally do most, most instructors, professors, go to you all and have videos sit there where they pick them out or do they have their students come to you and pick them out? I guess it's true. I'm just curious about kind of what the trend is. Uh, I think I mostly get requests from faculty that the faculty have determined this is what they want to use, but um, okay, yeah, there have been, there have been cases where, oh, we're going to vote on what we're going to use later in the semester and, and they'll get back to okay. me. So like that. Thank you. Thanks, Sean. Thank you, Donna. Any other questions about courses or video? Thank you. Okay. All right. Um, well, yeah, we uh, will not hold you any longer and um, give you back some time, but.